I thought it was all sort of uh, run of the mill, uh, trying to knock the head off uh, the uh, particularly gobby um, number eleven that England, uh, you know, have long um, that has a reputation for uh, for liking to uh, get in a bit of a scrap. You're starting um, to find the polite words to describe Jimmy Anderson the better. <laughs> It's time once again for ESPN Cricket for Run Order. What we saw on day three at Lords Bumrah, the barrage of short pitch bowling to Jimmy Anderson. Now, was it right? Was it wrong? Should tail enders be subject to such short pitch stuff that could injure them? Let's find out. BBS Lakshman, Steve Harmison, Osman Samyuddin, Alan Gardner, and Dustin Silgado. Steve Harmison, I will go to you first up because I know this is close to the heart. Bowling bouncers or targeted short pitch deliveries to tail enders. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem. I must admit, I, even when I was batting, I didn't have a problem with the the, the bowler bowling bounces at me. I was I'd give as good as I, I've got. Uh, I think the bouncer has has been here for a long, long time. It's a part of the game which. I think should steer. You could argue you know, how many bounces per over, but I think the actual bouncer itself shouldn't be shouldn't be either outlawed or even talked about even be outlawed for even one second. Nobody says anything when a batsman hits a half volley for four. I mean, that's not going to be outlawed. So for me, a bouncer is here to steer. Lakshman, where do you stand on this? Well, I've got no problem. I mean, Steve Armisen himself doesn't have any problem. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I just feel that it's part and parcel of professional sport. So I think uh, all the batsmen uh, know that uh, you know they have to improve in their skill, and so do the bowlers also know that you know now it's only not one dimensional. Whereas they have to be very good in the other skill set as well. If fielding becomes non-negotiable, and the other skill set probably in bowlers' case, which is batting where they have to show considerable amount of improvement. The rule or the law is there, which you uh, just sent it to me, 41.6.3, where the empaths have got uh, the right, uh, where you know if they feel that the bouncers uh, aimed at the bowlers uh, is not fair or it can be threatening, then the empaths can get into the way and you know ask the bowler not to do uh, bowl that, or then they can warn the bowler. And if the bowler repeats that, you know they can stop the bowler as well. So I just feel that that law is there, and I don't think that anything wrong was done when Jasprit Bumrah bowled those bouncers at uh, Jimmy Anderson. So there is a law which umpires don't seem to enforce, Osman. So why have the law then? Because clearly, what was happening that day now, I mean, it wasn't. Are you going to look at it and say, yeah, it's part of how you get a batter out, or was it just a rattle Anderson, possibly even hurt him and bruise him a little? So what? It's part of you know tactical gamesmanship. But there is a law, and no one seems to want to refer to it. No, I mean, just the fact that uh, that law hasn't been enforced doesn't mean that, you know, that law is redundant or that the law or that the umpire is not doing anything about it. You know, you have to kind of trust, or you have to, I mean, you have to not kind of, you have to absolutely trust the judgment of the umpire in a, in a situation like this, you know, their best place other than the teams, I guess, to kind of educate on something like this. And, you know, I, I, I put this question the other way, is that how would you enforce a control? On this, so you know, back, back in the back in the 70s when bouncer wars kind of first started, you know, West Indies were putting together their pace attack and stuff. There was a, you know, there, there was this moral panic in cricket about bouncers and, and bat, batters being hit. And so, you know, there was an incident in 78, I think, when Iqbal Qasim was hit by Bob Willis, had his jaw broken. He was because you know helmets weren't in then, and that led to a conversation first to control the number of bouncers per over, which you know we've now got two bouncers per over as as law. But there was also, really briefly, in one Ashes series, there was a discussion between the two captains. Uh, I think Mike Brilly was the one captain, and I, I can't quite recall who the Australian captain was at the time. But they said, how about we exchange a list of uh, non-recognised batters who we'll agree to not bowl bouncers at. And, you know, like they did it, but it was unenforceable because in one test, somebody did bowl a bouncer to Willis, and Bob Willis was supposed to be one of those guys who was on that list. And you know, once, once they broke that code, then Bob Willis, of course, started bowling bouncers at, at the Aussie tail as well. So there have been occasions when it was dangerous, when it looked like, you know, in Australia, India last year, last last winter, um, 
it did look at times like you know Australian bowlers were trying to trying to injure Indian 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 bowlers. And, but I would still think that you have to leave it up to the judgment of umpires. India have you know have have had a history of um, getting into uh, uh, riling James Anderson and, and uh, you know whether it's worked or not worked. On this occasion, it seems to have been a pretty decent tactical ploy. But yeah, I mean, I think the main issue for for Anderson there was that Bumra kept overstepping at the same time, which uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know if you can bring in the the sort of policing the no balls element to it um, as well. Maybe the umpires might have seen fit to take um, uh, take a bit of pity uh, on Jimmy there. Maybe no, I don't mind. Um, tail end has been bounced just because of the the great handbags potential uh, you know we've seen a little bit of it here um and, and you might always uh, get a, a devon malcolm um you guys a history sort of response so yeah i i don't have any great problems with it um i wouldn't do it to james anderson myself but um you know that's a different matter i mean i think to be fair in this lord's test it's been such a close test with every run mapping that you can kind of understand that they didn't seem to be malicious intent when Bumrah was bowling those balls to Anderson. He possibly thought that's just the best way to get him out. You know, I think in the previous test, Anderson had defended a few Yorkers pretty well, and he was kind of expecting that. But there have been times in the past, I think in Australia during Ashes series, when the Australians have done it in tests that were already kind of over. I mean, the infamous uh, "I'm get ready for a broken arm" incident that happened in the test that Australia won by more than 300 runs. So I think. At times, it does seem a little unnecessarily vicious to do it. Games that one team is already far ahead. In. Do we have better behaved bowlers over time? Have you ever encountered bowlers that genuinely took delight when they hit a batter, hit a tail ender? No, not one. Not mm. one. In my entire playing career and whatever I have covered or uh, seen as a broadcaster, not one uh, did I feel that they bowl with the intention of hitting someone. Yeah, they can lose temper. But losing temper doesn't mean that you want to hurt someone. The bouncer is not there to, is not intentionally to hurt anybody. The bouncer is there to, is, is to intimidate and to move a, a batsman, a batsman away from an area where you believe he, you could get him out. So if I, if you want to sort of go for an example, if I believe that I could kick somebody off or hit the top of the stumps, then two, two or three bouncers in and around the rib cage would get the batsman to go from stand on middle stump to gradually getting towards leg stump which opens up off stump and the outside edge so for me from a bouncer from a fast bowler's point of view that's why i would use the bouncer it's not to hurt or you know cause any damage it's to move a batsman across the crease away from the stumps to give me the better chance to get him out no intention whatsoever to inflict pain or harm okay let's go around the room uh bouncers short pitch bowling to tail enders Okay with it? Yes or no, Osman? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All Umpires right. know what they're doing. So do players. I'm okay with it. Alan? Yeah, bouncers are fine. Improve the sledging while they're at it. <laughs> Dustin? But I don't have to face them, so I guess it's fine. <laughs> Steve? Yeah, for me, they're, they're, they're here to stay. It's about the protections there for the, the batsmen. Um, and the, the, to be fair, the tail enders are getting better at facing. Mm -hmm. Lakshman, final word? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm fine with that. You know, and as Usman rightly mentioned, the call has to be taken by the empire, who are, who are probably the best judge and they are there uh, to take that call. And I, I just believe that the empire will use this uh, law only when uh, the bowlers are intentionally overstepping or if there is bad light and then the, the tail enders are not able to sight the ball and still they go on banging the short pitch delivery. And that is the time when probably the, the rule will be enforced by the empire. Till then, it's a competitive sport, it's a professional sport and everyone will do their best uh, to get the result in their favour and in their team's favour. Alright, there you have it. It's not a bad thing, it's alright.